Hi there and welcome. My name is Rebecca from Laugh So Create. And today I have a fun video for you. I'm going to do something a little different. I'm calling it a thrift, a thrift flip video where I take two shirts that I found at the thrift store and create one adorable little pouch. The beauty about finding for second hand is that they are a couple dollars each. You can find fabrics and the materials that you like. As for today, I'm using two fabrics that have similar colors so they coordinate. So today I'm going to use the striped shirt for the lining and crazy floral for the exterior of this pouch. I'm using the petal pouch by Noodlehead. It's tried and true. I have made multiple pouches with this pattern. It's clearly illustrated and the directions are step by step wonderful. So I encourage you to go over and check out the website and download a pattern for yourself. If you enjoy this video and would like to see more thrift flips and if you have any great ideas, drop them in the comments below. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button. If you'd like to be notified of the next videos, I think you click on the bell below. So join me as I walk you through step by step. Come along now and have some fun. So when I first get a pattern that I think I'm going to make multiple times. I print it out and I put it in document protectors and keep it in my notebook for further use. And I also go to the dollar store and get some of the some of the chopping mats to make some clear templates. That way I can use it over and over again. And I just write the or the cut list right on the uh, template so that I know what to do. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the large version, but there's also a very adorable tiny small one. So let's get started. You'll cut out two main pieces as well as two lining pieces. Then you'll cut out two pieces of interfacing to attach to the main panels. So you'll need a zipper end tab. The dimensions are in the pattern. You'll just need one. So today I'm using zipper tape and I'm going to trim it to 11 and a quarter inches. So if you have a pre-purchased zipper that's 12 inches, that should be plenty. So the first step is to fuse the main panel pieces with interfacing. Whatever interfacing you're using, follow the instructions. So the next step is actually marking this dart stitch line on the back side of the fabric using a fabric marker. When I made templates, I made one that was the exterior line and then the other one is the, or the marking line for the dart. So I'm going to use the bigger one to mark the dart lines. So line up your pattern. So it's good when you print this piece to print two of them. That way you can cut one to that exterior and one to that. Repeat on the other side of both main fabric panels. So you can put your fabric pieces to the side. I'm gonna work on the zipper next. If you use zipper tape, it's a good idea to sear the ends so that you don't get all the fraying. So I'm going to mark it at 11 and a quarter inches. I try to use a different pair of scissors than the fabric scissors, and it could blunt your scissors that you use for fabric. Click to attach the zipper head. I'll show you how to attach it. There we go. All right, so there's your zipper. You can open up the other side. All right, so your zipper is now ready for the next step. So you want to take your tab and you're going to want the wrong sides together and press. And it'll tell you the dimensions on this end matching these ends. So once you've pressed it in half, you're going to take the exteriors and fold it in 
towards the center line and press each of the sides in. Next, grab your zipper. And if you have a metal zipper, you're gonna have to be careful of not sewing over the metal components. But I'm gonna take the little zipper tab and enclose the end and clip it. Next, I'm going to sew the zipper tab on the end using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length, going about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Back stitch at the beginning and end. You wanna make sure that you're catching both sides. Going slow over the zipper, polyester zipper teeth. Back stitch, double check that I got the back I did. Trim the zipper tab to the width of the zipper. Okay, so next we're gonna work on the other end of the zip. You're gonna take the tape. You're gonna want the zipper tape to sort of sit at an angle like so, and you want to stitch. You can hand stitch it or mach machine stitch it, but the goal is to get both sides the same. So you can use clips to hold it in place. Let me make sure I'm going in the right direction. Here, make sure you're zipper. Yep, that's fine. Sometimes this can be tricky in the beginning. So it may be easier to hand sew it in place, but I'm going to baste it with a machine. What I've also found is if you use something pointy and like a stylet, or you could use even, I found a flathead screwdriver can help because it can help hold that in place as it's feeding through the machine. And you're just basting it and go slowly. Don't want to get your fingers in there. I'm going to back stitch to make sure it's secure. And that's what it's going to look like and repeat for the other side. And don't be discouraged if it takes you a couple of times when you're starting. It can be kind of tricky. The key is to start on the edge of the zipper tape. Just want to get it in place and hold it down. Trim off the threads. If you would like to attach a pole or a loop, in this case I'm using cork, and I've made it a little bit longer than one inch squared, and I'm going to fold it in half. So pin the ribbon tab or whatever you're using about one inch down from the top left hand corner of the main one of the main pieces. You want to make sure that the loop is facing in because we're going to stitch along here and then it'll pop out once you turn the bag out along the edge about a four millimeter stitch length. You just want to do it about an eighth of an inch away. And you don't need to back stitch at the beginning and end because it's going to be caught in the seam. Trim off your tails. So take the main exterior panel, place it right, the pattern right side up, and you're going to take your zipper and place it right side down with a zipper pull on the left hand side. You're going to mark a dot three quarters of an inch from the left side of the curve. So about there. And then the tab should be about three quarters of an inch from this right hand side. Next I'm gonna use some clips to clip the zipper on. It's better than pins because if you do use pins, it has a tendency to cause waving in your zipper. Matching the exterior zipper tape to the curved edge. So you should have something like this. Next, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and baste it at about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. No need to backstitch. The designer also states that you can pull the zipper all the way to the right and it, it may make it easier to keep the zipper 
flat. So use a longer stitch, such as a four millimeter stitch length. Okay, I don't know if I caught that, but you're gonna make your way down at about an eighth to a quarter of an inch down and basting along. And the zipper tab is going to be on the end. When you are sewing, you wanna come, make sure that you stop at a point with your needle down, lift the presser foot, move the head out of the way, and then lower the presser foot to continue down. That way you avoid any kind of wonky lines of sewing around your zipper head. Once you've basted the zipper on, you just take one of the lining pieces and you're going to place it face down. Wrong side is going to be facing up. Now, this shirting fabric looks about the same on both sides, but you want to make sure that the main fabric is facing up with the correct side. And then you're going to make sure that when you sandwich the zipper, that you have the wrong side of the lining facing towards you. And you're going to repeat the process and pin in place all the way around the curve. Again, you can put the zipper head all the way to the right hand side. So next, you're going to make sure that you have your zipper foot on your sewing machine and you're going to stitch all the way across using a quarter inch seam allowance. This time you're going to use a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Again, back stitch at the beginning and end and turn on your sewing machine. Okay, I'm approaching the zipper head, so I'm going to leave the needle down in the downward position, pull the zipper foot up, rotate the fabric, pull the zipper head out of the way, and then proceed down, put your zipper foot back down, and proceed along the way. Next, you're gonna take pinking shears and trim along the edge. Now take it to the sewing machine and continue to pull the lining away while top stitching on the right side of the main panel. I'm going to top stitch a three millimeter stitch length about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And I do like to back stitch. Place the wrong sides together and give it a quick press. So next take the last main exterior piece of fabric and place it face up and then take your panel with a zipper on it. Before I do that I want to make sure that I line up the sides, place a mark so I know where to place the zipper at about three quarters of an inch again in from the sides. I'm going to attach the zipper in the same way that we did. Another way you could do it is mark the center point on the zipper and mark the center point on the other panel. You're going to repeat the steps and base the zipper to the other main panel for four millimeter stitch length. Lift the presser foot, move the zipper head out of the way lower the zipper foot and continue down. Next, grab the last lining piece and you're gonna place it wrong side up. Okay, so let me show you what you should have so far. So this side's already been top stitched. Next step is to top stitch, but you wanna make sure that the lining's out of the way and that when you're top stitching, you're catching the pinked seam. Don't forget to change it back to a top stitching length. 
want to just make sure that the lining's out of the way and that it doesn't catch. Now press the lining away so the wrong sides will be together. Now at this point you want to make sure that you have the zipper about halfway. Very important. Okay, to sew the darts, you want to take the exterior fabric and place it right sides together at the dart, but you're going to stitch right on that line, 2.5 millimeter stitch length, and repeat on all four sides of the exterior fabric. I like to start at the bottom of the legs and work my way up to the apex and sew off at that point. You can back stitch it once if you'd like to secure it and that way the dart won't come undone. Placing the stitch length at 2.5 millimeters, back stitching at the beginning and end. So you can see when you turn them out, it'll make a nice dart. Repeat on the other side. Okay, now that all of the darts have been sewn, you're going to take your little butterfly <laughs> and place the right sides together. So I like to make sure that the darts or lined up first, and then I work my way out. So to show you, when you turn it right side out, the goal is to get the lines to line up as best as you can. Then I come this way and make sure that that seam is lined up as well, because that'll be very visible. So this seam, let me show you, will be here. And as you can see, I didn't do a super job on that, but you get the idea. You want to try to line it up so that your top stitching looks nice as well. Continue all the way around. So when you get to the tab, you want to make sure that you're bending it in towards the lining and lining it up as best as you can. I'm going to repeat the process of lining everything up with the darts and the lining, but you'll want to make sure to put a mark on either side to remind you to leave a gap for turning. About a three inch gap is fine. So you're going to stitch all the way around at a half inch seam allowance using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Mm. Double stitch at the beginning and end. I mean back stitch at the beginning and end. Go slowly over the tab if you have one. Trying to hold everything flat. Pivot if you need to. Okay, go slowly over the thicker parts. Make sure everything's tucked in too much. I can feel the tab. The goal is to get not right over the zipper tab, but to ride right next to it. I like to back stitch at that point because it's a stress point. And don't forget to stop at the gap and back stitch. And I reinforce it so when you turn it, it doesn't come undone. Pick up on the other side of the gap. Same thing, back stitch. Pink around the corners 
and trim down the seam allowance to a quarter inch. The one spot where you don't really want to trim is where the gap is because you're going to use that extra fabric to turn in. I'm going to press the extra fabric at the opening down and that will make it easier to get a nice finish. Now it's time to turn the pouch through. You can always use a hot pad is what the designer recommends. I've used a hot pad before from your kitchen to get in there and press it. I'm going to turn in the extra hem to close the lining up. So stitch along that seam. And you can clip it. I always start a little bit further back from the opening just to make sure that reinforced and that you're actually closing the whole gap. So just double check to make sure that you caught the lining. Tuck your lining in. Heads pattern. <sighs> I thought it would be a perfect little pouch. I thought it would be a I thought it'd be a perfect little pouch. So today I'm gonna show you how to take these two and create today I'm gonna be today I'm gonna be making the petal pouch. But it's clearly illustrated with good directions, but I'm gonna help you walk. But I'm gonna but I'm enjoyed the thrift uh, if you enjoy it. <laughs> 